Welcome everyone, Adam is woo here as a recording of this Wednesday, January 26th, 2022, and I am just now departing Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where I will be heading across the state line into North Carolina, where I have until February 1st procured a hotel so I will be in the Greensboro, North Carolina until the end of this month, checking out of the next hotel on February 1st. And this would just be a simple... Oh! There's someone in the chapel. Wait. Mom? Yes! Come on in! Now, we went to Atlanta, what was it? Right before Halloween... We were doing a road trip, and you were in a small church building there. Yeah. Now we're in Myrtle Beach. Yes, and it's very nice in here. Very, very nice. Every every time I do my intro, when we're on a road trip, and you're with me, you're inside one of these chapels. That's right. I'm inviting you to join me and my mom as we cross the state line out of South Carolina and North Carolina. Shall you? All right, Mom, give me a tour. Oh, yeah. Established 1972. This looks a lot better than the one we saw last time. This is in much better shape. Yeah, they have to pe yeah, this is. It looks like people have been in here on a, a regular basis. They even have an air conditioner and a heater in here. This is the Travelers Chapel, and that way people can stop truck drivers that are traveling through, or people passing through that just wants to. Spend a little time with the Lord and pray and just get some quiet time. And they come in here, and this is very nice. They've kept this up really, really nice compared to that last one we went to. It even has the stained glass windows. People have wrote down their thoughts there in that, that book. Oh, here's a little pamphlet. Nineteen seventy two, Reverend Emory Young and his son Bruce and many volunteers con constructed the Travelers Chapel. It is visited by hundreds of people each year, local residents, college students, travelers. Operated and maintained by Travelers Tra Chapel Incorporated. There is an incorporation that takes care of these. So I never realized that. There are quite a few of these across the country. I've probably seen at least a dozen. In my travels. They definitely have the heat on in here. Mom has left a little a little message. Here in the guest book. Now, there really is not a major plan for today. Just traversing across the countryside. Leaving the Traveler's Chapel, established 1972. And heading northbound-ish across the North Carolina line and into North Carolina. That'll be the episode with my mom. Been driving down the road a bit and noticed this convenience store, and in front of the convenience store next to the ice machine just so happens to be a King Kong and an Elvis sculpture. And we were I was in the car and I asked you what you wanted to listen to on the radio, Mama. What'd you say? Elvis Presley. Mom said, I want to listen to Elvis Presley, so I put Elvis on, and the next thing we know, here's Elvis standing next to King Kong. <laughs> That's like a sign. That? That's like a coincidence or a fate, sign. Fate. And look over here, Mom. There's a, a relic of the past right there. Well, oh yeah, it sure is. Phone booth. It's a phone booth. Well, nothing in it. You don't see many of those left anymore. That's just a shell. Continuing on down the road, stopping off at Galley Vance Ferry, where they would have a stump meeting twice a year. No, every spring, every two years, since 1880. Galley Vance Ferry. It's funny because my mom's waiting in the car. But she's the one that taught me the word Galley Vance. She would always say that. 
go out and gallivant around. A lot of the dialogue. You always learn from your parents. This old SO gas station here in Gallivant. And they have kept the prices from back in the day where premium was only 34 cents a gallon. The pumps over here with the ESSO logo on it. Kind of tough to even really make out what it says there. But this historical marker, George Judson Holiday, PD Farms, the PD River is a bridge right next to this. That is pretty dang cool. And just to give a little more info on where we're heading, we are heading away from family. Spent the last week or so in Myrtle Beach and we're going to go visit more family. My mom is the oldest of eight brothers and sisters. So on her side, a lot of family members and we're going through some personal stuff. So she flew up to Myrtle Beach for the last week and now we're gonna head into North Carolina. We're gonna pop over into Virginia as well, but where we're gonna be staying, we got us a hotel on the North Carolina, Virginia line. So I'll be there for a short tenure just to keep keep everyone in the loop we have some other family up there and then she's gonna fly back to Florida on the 30th and then I'll stay in Greensboro one additional day and then I'll continue to trek around North Carolina Galley Vance Ferry I like it oh look at this look at this no checks or credit cards. Please stop your motor if you have a cigarette. Oh, wow. Use tire bargains. I love this. This is so cool. This is on the National Register of Historic Places as well. Look at that. Right across from the Gallivance Ferry convenience store and general merchandise, an active fuel station. Continued on a bit. And according to what I was reading, this is slated as the world's oldest cotton press right here in the yard of this plantation home. Built in 1798, according to tradition, is thought by many to be the oldest in existence. First owned and used by John Bethia III, powered by oxen and mules. Are you familiar with how it works? No, not at all. I'm from the tobacco country, not cotton. Hey, you were telling me you worked in the tobacco fields when you were young, right? In Virginia. In Virginia. But this, I've never seen one of these. So this looks like a big corkscrew right up here. This obviously turns. It is very tall. Probably about 30 feet tall. I wonder what those things going, going down like that is. <clears throat> so something water ran down there or what? Massive. shelf right there. This was not where it originally was. It was moved here to preserve it back in 1948. I'm reading the sign from all the way over here, so that's how I know about it. Yeah, this thing's about, I don't know if it's 30 feet tall, but at least 25 feet or more. According to tradition, the world's old, oldest in existence. Notice all these pine cones over here too. These are pine trees. Now, I know that's pretty familiar to anyone 
living in the south, so I'm familiar with pine trees, but maybe some watching don't realize what falls from these branches. Pine cones. These are pine cones right here. Take a look. Some use them as, you know, art decor. You can decorate them. There's a lot of pine cones here in this yard. Pine cones from pine trees, also pine straw, which is kind of a pain to rake up. I know because I used to have to do it a lot as a chore. Keeping on down the road, noticing these classic car, classic cars alert right here behind this fence line. Appears as if they are for sale. Look at this relic. $7,500. Have not crossed over the state line of South Carolina as of yet. Just crossed over I-95, but kind of not really taking back roads, but taking some of the small towns. This isn't really a small town episode. Just trying to get where we got to go in a timely fashion, but I'll stop and show these. I believe the community's name is Oak Hill, South Carolina. Oak something, South Carolina. Right off of I-95, just crossed over I-95, over the overpass. Over in Bennettsville, South Carolina now, this golf sign right here. And this information placard says, the Gulf. This area has been the center of African American business district and a popular gathering place since the late 19th century. It has been called the Gulf. And over there is a custom air conditioned and heating business with some old photos and images of buildings that once stood, the old post office right here in this area as well. This is Marlboro County, the county seat, and that's the courthouse right there. I wonder if the Marlboro man's around. Probably no affiliation, but that's what I think of when I think of Marlboro. And take a look up on the side of this building. James O. Breeden's buggies, wagons, and harnesses. A place that used to sell buggies and wagons. Uh, it looks like the R has been removed from the side of this. Marlboro. <laughs> Marlboro. And now into Chira. This is the hardware store. See the little silhouette there of the old signage, the Duval building. A small little town right before the state line. And a pretty cute downtown right over here. Didn't realize until I just saw a sign. This is the birthplace of Dizzy Gillespie. And there is a statue here honoring Dizzy Gillespie. Right there, John Burks Gillespie, Dizzy. About to cross the into the North Carolina. I gotta put it out of take it out of park. Put it into drive. Gonna go across the state line from South Carolina. Now into North Carolina. And notice just a few feet from the state line on this road as we head northbound into North Carolina. Facing back towards South Carolina, it says formed in 1712 from part of Carolina, which was chartered in 1663. And on the opposite side is information about, we just headed into North Carolina, colonized 1585 to 87 by the first English settlers in America. Permanently settled in 1650. Neat, so it's two-sided. 
crossed over into North Carolina out of South Carolina. Got a little welcoming party here, Mom, in North Carolina. They're saying hi. Right here at the state line. It's a state line welcome party. Where are you going? That one's running off, get camera shot. Is that a chihuahua? Yeah, that's what it is. Chihuahuas or yappers. And now pulling through Rockingham, noticing this old motel sign says truck parking, but also has the the amenities like a king size bed and back when places like this would promote HBO. I don't know if HBO is a selling point anymore, but it used to be. Cable and HBO. Still there on the marquee. Found this place off the side of the road near Ellerby, I believe it's pronounced, called the Berry Patch. A very large strawberry. Also some photo ops over here of a peach and a strawberry. But this roundabout building is painted to look like a strawberry. And not only is there a strawberry down here, but there's a strawberry. Oh, mom's in the strawberry. You're a strawberry mama? <laughs> yep, I am. I've been choking myself to death. <laughs> now you're inside a peach. Oh, so it has a place for your arms to go through there. Yeah, you put your, I think you put your head too far through the strawberry and the wood was pressed up against your neck. That's what happened. You gotta be careful. You learn that. <laughs> Which do you like being inside better, the peach or the strawberry? Peach, because I like peaches. You like peaches better than strawberries? Yes. A nice little quaint, cute shop here with an assortment of products, you know, vegetables and fruits and whatnot all through here. They also have bottled drinks. They have bottled Coca Cola. You don't, it's, it's tough to, some stores do not have bottled Coca Cola, usually it's plastic, but they have bottled here as well. And as stated, you know, a lot of, a lot of fresh fruits and veggies and things through here as well. Nice little roadside stop off the side. There's also a watermelon, painted watermelon water tank over here off to the side of the parking lot. Look at this, it's a big, it's a big watermelon. You get a good sized watermelon there. I've arrived now in Seagrove, the pottery capital of the world. The sign designated on the way in. Got the oak, a lot of pottery. Bob's crossing over one of the pottery stores, see what's in the window. She put her jacket on, it's kind of getting a little chillier as the day progresses. There's a pottery center here. There's a pottery store up here on this corner. There's a pottery, no, it's a railroad agency there. Are any of these open? Pottery Capitals, Village Pottery. Okay, yeah. All the pottery in the world you could think of. I guess it is. They do paint it. So you used to do ceramics. What's the difference between ceramics and pottery? Look at like these. Ceramics to me, but I guess it's pottery. It's probably the... Look at these little vases, these little jars that have the faces on them. Do you still have any of your old ceramic stuff that you made? Oh, yeah. Look what this thing on top is. What that? They pour oil out of there, perhaps? I don't know. Like cooking oil? It could be. It could be. Now this does look different than the ceramics you used to make. Yeah, it's a, I guess it's a, the stuff. What is that, a tortilla holder? I don't know if it, it's a tape. What's the difference between ceramics and pottery? What's the difference between ceramics and pottery? Well, there's most probably ten different categories based on the formulation of the clay used. It's all pottery, it's all ceramics, but ceramics generally is these lower temperature slip cast 
little whimsy things that you would get from a paint by number. That's referred to as ceramic, but pottery is ceramics as well. Pottery usually refers to hand turned or hand built yes. from. Because you always see people making yeah, pottery with exactly. their hands. Like what we have here, yeah. which yeah. is in the shop. Yeah. And we have about 80 different potters, including what my wife and I make, which is the pieces back there. We have another fellow that makes these owls. Yeah. Was <laughs> oh, it a whistle? Yeah. There you go, Mom. <laughs> And now continuing on, this old service station, as one of my favorite things I'm always looking for, Coca-Cola advertisement painted on the side of the cinder block there. Doesn't look like it dates back too far. It almost looks like it's been touched up over the years, but the gas pumps are out front. Even though it's not open, there's a little relic of the past there, Coca-Cola, side of this wall. And now over into Randleman. See another mural there. Coca-Cola on the mural. This is probably about 20 minutes from the last spot I was at. That gas station on the side of the street. This is my shadow over this little manhole here. Waving at my shadow. And my shadow is pointing right there to the Richard Petty placard. Richard Petty is shown right here. This is not a full-size sculpture. Definitely not full size, probably only maybe four feet tall. But there is Richard Petty in all his glory underneath this tree limb. Got the helmet as well overlooking the road and the water tower right up there, Randleman Water Tower. The artist's name is right back here. A.M. Von Stack. If I am reading that correctly. 1999, this was erected. And it states here, Richard Petty, on behalf of the Randleman Chamber of Commerce from the city of Randleman and the people of the community, we dedicate the scaled down replica of Richard Petty in honor of over 35 years of dedication to NASCAR racing in our community. Richard is not only from our hometown hero, he is our hometown hero, but he's a friend and neighbor. That's dated 1992. There it is, Richard Petty. And there's my shadow again, so I'm gonna, hello, right there. Richard Petty. Got the shades on. It's like one of his hallmarks, that in the cowboy hat. Made it to this evening's destination, and I will be in this area for a while, until February 1st, checking out of this hotel. However, right here in the parking lot in South Carolina, there was a lot of ice and sleet, but no accumulation of snow. That is not the case here in North Carolina, inside Greensboro. Look at this big pile of icy snow that has not dissolved. A big pile here. Still doing family stuff. I have a couple aunts and uncles that live about an hour from here, so I'm using this as a central point for a short tenure, as stated at the beginning of the video. Today was just a travel day. I would like to get back on the the extreme back roads. Look at all the snow. And small towns, but that probably won't happen for a bit until my mom, while my mom's with me. Just enjoying some family stuff and seeing some, some relatives that we haven't seen in a while. Some personal stuff that obviously shouldn't always be mentioned. Not everything has to be mentioned in the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video of the vlog. It's over.